Today is the second video in the Algo versus Crab series where we will be testing the MACD indicator. The first video I did, I tested the RSI indicator and we found out some really good insights how to use that indicator, especially with equity. The idea came when I saw these channels that they are testing the indicator or a strategy for 100 trades on one market, which is of course totally crap because it means nothing. So instead, we are testing not 100 trades, not 1,000 trades, not even 10,000 trades. Each of our indicator in this series will be tested over 100,000 trades on its own. So overall, we should have about 576 strategies with about 100,000 trades per indicator. Now, like I mentioned, in order to measure these indicators and rank them based on their performance, we need to put some guidelines. We can't just go willy-nilly and and put an indicator on some data and say, well, this is good or this is bad. So I devised these guidelines in order to be able to compare them all as equal as possible. So what I did is I first of all picked the data series. So we will be doing it on the last 16 years. So that should cover long, short volatility, not volatility and so on and so forth. We are covering 36 markets, agriculture, energy, equities, uh, currencies, interest rate, and then I picked four speeds for every indicator with the fastest speed shooting for around 400 trades uh, for the 16 years and the slowest uh, speed shooting for around 100 trades for the 16 years. And finally, we have two type of exit. So exit number one, we exit at the same day that we are entering. And type two exit includes three exits inside it. So we will either go with a stop loss of four ATRs, profit target of two ATRs, or we will stop in five days. So first, let me show you the MACD indicator. Of course, it's available in every charting software. And this is the gold futures prices. And you can see we have the green line and the red line. These are two exponential moving averages. The green line is 12 periods and the red line is 26 periods. Below is the MACD. So the MACD measures the difference between these two exponential moving averages. And you see this blue line that's measuring the difference. And we also have the histogram and it goes up and down as the space between these two indicators go up and down. And then whenever these two moving averages cross over, that means our MACD line will cross below zero when the fast moving average go below the moving average. And when the opposite happens, for example, here, when the fast moving average goes above the slow moving average, then our MACD goes above the zero line. But we will use it in the default way, which is when the MACD line, which is the blue line, cross over its average. So this is a cross down, and this is a cross up, cross down, cross up, and of course, you can distinguish between crossing happening above zero, below zero, but that is not important because we are not building a strategy here. We are measuring the strength of this indicator over all these markets, over all these multiple speeds. The idea then we can compare all these indicators together because now they are uh, doing the same thing kind of very closely. And then we can measure which one is performing better on the most number of markets, on the most number of speed. And then we can say, well, we can rank this indicator higher than the other indicator. So this is the gold futures in uh, multi charts. And here I plotted two speeds. So this is the fast speed, MACD 6, 13, and 4. And this is the third speed, 12, 26, and 9. And again, these speeds, not for the purpose of optimizing the indicator to perform the best, but I just pick the speeds that closely get us to the number of trades that we require in order to compare with the other indicator. So here, for example, you can see the trades we are exiting end of day and we are doing the trades on the third speed. So 12, 26, 9, we can see when we cross over, then we buy the next day, we exit on the same day. And here we cross over, we buy again next day, we exit same day. This is long only. And here we're doing the same thing. Of course, we will do the short side separately. And you can see now these are the trades done on the fastest speed. So 6, 13 and 4. And you can see already we have many more trades. And so you can see we have more crossovers. So this one is a crossover and here is a crossover. And remember, we are doing only the long here. We will do the short side separately. 
So here is our portfolio tester and we are testing these 36 markets. So this is for example is the test for the fastest speed with exit end of day long only. And you can see this is the performance for the whole portfolio and we can break it down by symbol. So we can see Japanese yen is doing very well here and Euro dollar is doing very well. This is the annualized period. But remember, this is not a strategy. We are just testing the strength of this indicator. So of course, once you do this, then we need to export all the trades, collate them. So I did that and I brought everything into our Excel database. Now comes the fun part. Once we have all our data in, we can start to look for insights about this indicator. First of all, we have 107,000 trades. This is the sum 1.7 million. And on average, every strategy has 187 trades with a profit factor of 50%. Now that we have everything inside this database, we can, of course, filter any column as we like. So I picked any instrument that has more than five strategies making more than $100 per trade on average. So this is the filter for all indicators. In this case, we have 121 strategies that pass this filter. So you can see here, uh, Bitcoin has eight strategies and heating oil, 10 strategies and equities, 35 strategies. Of course, equities includes all the equities. And I also included the VIX index, which is the volatility index on the S&P. And you can see these are the speeds in all those, uh, most of them happening on all speeds, which is really tells you that this is a robust indicator on this instrument because the first speed is generating around 400 trades and the slow speed generating around 100 trades. So that's a very robust measure that this indicator works on this instrument. So let's look at the chart. So this is the average net profit when we do that filter. And we can see, of course, Bitcoin occupying 21% of that, followed by heating oil at 14% and gold at 11%. The equities are uh, many symbols inside one. So we expect it to have a big chunk. And then if we look at the number of trades, coffee is number one with 191 trades on average per strategy. Gold with 170 trades on average per strategy. Euro dollars, 166 trades. And here we have the number of strategies when we apply that filter. So of course, equities has the highest with 35 strategies passing this filter, which is $100 average trade. And then heating oil, we have 10 strategies passing that filter. And finally, this shows us the average trade when we apply that filter. So this is the average trade per instrument of all these strategies that passed. So for Bitcoin, the average trade of all strategies that producing more than $100 on average is $1,500. Remember, heating oil had 10 strategies. So the average trade of those 10 strategies was $297, which is really big number. And then to compare the indicators to each other, I pick the top five strategies with the highest average trade with a minimum of 65 trades per strategy. So for example, you can see here, these are the top five strategies from the RSI. And here now we have the top five strategies from MACD. And here is our final figures. So right now, of course, we have only two, the RSI and MACD. And this is how we will compare those indicators. So these numbers are the average of these top five strategies. We can see that the MACD makes more money because it has a little bit higher average trade, but also it has more trades. The return to drawdown is very close. But of course, since we have higher net profit, we expect, of course, higher drawdown. That's how this number is closed. And this will be our benchmark for all these indicators. Now, this is good to compare these indicators to each other as a starting point for building a strategy. So for example, this is heating oil and we can see we can go long and short, end of day, multiple exits and multiple speeds. They're all generating good profits, all of them above 100. Of course, I filtered above $100. And so we can tell that, okay, MACD is a really good start on heating oil. So you can see the insights you gain from a research like this is invaluable because now you can pick 
the best instruments that are suited with the best indicators for them and over multiple speeds. And you can start from there to build your strategy. Some of these strategies already have the multiple exits, stop loss, profit target built in. And then you only need to, to pick the starting base, like for example, uh, natural gas, 10 strategies already performing on all speeds. You already know you are good there. Just by adding a simple uh, filter, that strategy will be really, really good. But you should not overlook robustness. Robustness is extremely important. And that's why I dedicated one full module in my Algo Trading Masterclass for robustness only. Because uh, you cannot just pick any profitable strategy and trade it and hope that it will make money in the future. Now, if I filter strategies that has a minimum of minus $100 average trade, and then we filter out the end of day strategies, and then let's sort on the biggest. So here is what you can do now. These strategies are all exiting end of day. They are making really good average trade. And these guys, for example, doing really good number of trades. So for example, you see this one, 332 trades. This is losing 89. But since it's exiting end of day, I can just reverse this and I will be making $89,500. So these are, of course, more profitable strategies by just reversing the entry. And we can test this. You can see this is silver on 613 and 4. So here it is. This is silver, 89,500. And now I just reversed the trade and you see now silver is making 89,000. So you can see the same number of trades, but now we are going short instead of long on the same signal. And our average trade is 270. This is the uh, equity curve. Remember, this is not a strategy yet. This is only the beginning. But imagine this beginning. You already now have, look at this. Bitcoin has five strategies that can be reversed and making money. And remember, Bitcoin had already eight strategies doing well normally. So that elevates the number of strategies in Bitcoin to 13 using MACD. And then look at this. Gasoline, now we have four strategies that if we reverse them, they will be making really good money. To learn more, watch these videos and I will see you there.